Hey guys, you have Daniel with Tiny Rig again. Uh, George is behind the camera and we're about to walk you through this Jeep Gladiator that we built. So before we jump into the specifics of this Gladiator build, I'm just gonna kind of generally go over the Gladiator with the Canopy Camper. So the Alu Cab Canopy Camper can go on the Tacoma, it can go on the Ranger, it can go on the Colorado. Um, but of all those vehicles, the Gladiator is very likely gonna be the most capable. Um, you know, putting 37 inch tires on a Gladiator is pretty easy. Um, and the advantage of like a 35 or a 37 is pretty substantial when off-road. Even if you're not going rock crawling, think of it as insurance. Um, you know, you might get yourself in a situation where, you know, having a 37 versus a 35 or a 33 just might get you out of it. Um, so it's not necessarily building it to beat the crap out of it or take it rock crawling, but building it from like an insurance standpoint for your family if you're going out there. Um, you know, we, we build a lot of these vehicles and from a fitment standpoint, in terms of the aesthetic, like you guys can see how tight the overhang is. Um, the Canopy Camper just fits the Gladiator really, really well. And if I only had one vehicle and I was just building a Canopy Camper build specifically, that's the camper I decided on. Um, if I could afford it, the Gladiator in diesel would definitely be my pick. So not a whole lot going under the engine bay, but I'm just gonna show you guys some of the things we do to make the installation serviceable and future-proof. That way, if you ever have to take it to the dealer, um, they don't give you any problems with some of the electronics we had. Um, so I'm gonna walk you over here. We've got very minimal going on. Uh, we have, you'll see in the back, we've got an ARB twin compressor mounted on the goose gear. There's a circuit breaker here for that. Uh, we've got rock lights all the way around on this truck. And rather than using the, uh, the parts that come with those rock light kits that are usually where they kind of cheap out, we've done like a blue C nice uh, mini bus bar here for everything. And then over here, we have a circuit breaker for the camper. Uh, everything's been mounted on some angled aluminum, which is, I would say a little crude in terms of uh, you know the quality of this build. I think we can definitely improve on that and we'll start making some custom brackets and whatnot this coming year but for the time being we've used this it's extremely functional we're not drilling any extra holes in that uh, that can potentially corrode uh, and everything just bolts into a factory location all right so wheels and tires uh, pretty standard on this truck we've got a 37 inch bfg ko2 um, just really good all-around tire uh, the customers actually had a few different setups on this truck and he prefers these uh, and honestly most people that have ko2s just end up liking them forever. My wife had them on a first gen Tacoma and they lasted 70,000 miles, not off-roading. Um, gnarly backfire, sorry about that guys. Um, and then wheel-wise, uh, this actually came with an AEV wheel, which is a beautiful wheel built really, really well. Sorry about the exhaust notes. Uh, but we had a wheel spacer up front to make clearance for the power brake. I'm sure just laughing on the other side of the camera right now because the exhaust, but I think you'll be able to hear me. Um, as far as the wheel goes, so this wheel, um, we were able to eliminate the wheel spacer. Um, if you do run an AEV wheel, you will need a wheel spacer in order to run a big brake kit like the power brakes that are on this truck. Uh, customer, after having the wheel spacers, decided he'd rather just swap out the wheels so that he's not getting as much mud on the side with the little extra poke from the, from the wheel spacer. Um, quick little note on wheel spacers. A lot of people have a, a lot of fear of running a wheel spacer. However, um, I've personally had them on my truck for years. Um, they've been used for a really long time. Usually when there's an issue with them, it's from, uh, we'll call it like misproper installation, um, cheap components, and not making sure that they're the, the right quality to go on a vehicle. Um, and it's also, it's just, it's another place for hardware, right? So you just need to check, uh, check torque when you service your truck. Um, but you know, they're really, really solid if they're installed correctly and they're a good quality product. Um, moving to the back, I guess, as far as George, you can come around with me. Um, you guys will see this in a second. There is no spare tire carrier on this truck. Uh, really common misconception on Gladiators is that a 37 does not fit under the truck. Um, and we'll make sure we get a little shot for you, but the 37 inch KO2 fits under the truck, no problem. Um, and so with that, we try to eliminate putting that weight on the back door because it's a factory option to be able to put that tire under there. Again, this vehicle came to us from AEV. Uh, so it already had their suspension on it. Um, from AEV factory, you can get 8100s and oftentimes you can spec a higher capacity coil. This particular truck came off the lot and already had a standard capacity coil. So what we ended up doing was just upgrading the coil up front. Um, Again, from a, a Gladiator standpoint, we, we try to stick to AEV for a lot of different stuff. Um, and the reason is it works really, really well. Um, on this particular truck, right, the 8100s, uh, which are the higher end offering that AEV provides, uh, work really well. I've talked to AEV, called them, talked to their engineers, and they 
she kind of shared with me a lot of the R&D that they do. Um, they build these for overlanding, so they're already tuned from AEV with a higher capacity or um, you know higher dampening rate for a little bit of an extra load. Um, and then paired with the coils, it ends up riding really nice. Um, it might be a little soft for most people's taste, um, especially when aired down, but it's gonna ride really nice and it's gonna support the truck really well. So in addition to the camper and the things on the exterior of the truck, uh, we did do an upgrade on the interior. Um, we've got PRP enduro seats that the customer provided, and we sourced some moto belt seat brackets, which actually bolt to all the factory locations. Uh, if you are interested in those, you can order those directly from moto belt. They do come raw, so we got these powder coated. Um, and then some of the other things that we had to sort out, the seat belts, uh, the factory seat belt kind of isn't necessarily long enough, so we did some seat belt extensions. And then obviously you've got the electronics of the vehicle that you've got to work through. So we did that up here, uh, the customers pretty tall and so having a seat that sits lower actually helped with kind of like the crammed feeling that you get sometimes in a gladiator as a taller person. Um, jumping in back, currently we've got a Goose Gear 40% seat delete. Um, initially the customer was going to keep that 60% side so that he could still have passengers but after having the truck for uh, we'll call it about eight months or so. He's elected to do a Goose Gear 60% high seat delete, uh, which unfortunately we can't show you guys. But when we spec these trucks out, our formula always for f refrigeration is putting a National Luna 50 liter fridge right behind the driver's seat on that 40. It fits awesome and it's also extremely convenient. It ends up giving you a bigger camper space. Um, it's under the awning, it's accessible. So if you pull off the side of the road real quick, you just open your door rather than having to open the camper. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've got a 813 Fabrications compressor mount. So the air chuck is right here. The switch for the compressor is right here. And then, uh, sorry about the exhaust guys. Um, We've got uh, Al, uh, sponsored by Wifey. You can find him on Instagram. Uh, he's known for doing something called a Wifey air system, which is a really cool air system that allows you to air up all four tires at once and air down all four tires at once. Uh, essentially, you're gonna go to each wheel well, plug the chuck in, plug the chuck into your tire, hit one button, and all four will go up. Um, they'll equalize from a pressure standpoint, and then airing down is actually the same function. So we were able to fit that behind the National Luna 50 liter fridge on the 40% seat delete. And then we're gonna be adding that 60% seat delete on the other side. And uh, as I said, 40% low. If you go with the high one, you're gonna have difficulty hitting the roll bar with the fridge lid. Um, but on the 60% side, you can definitely go for the high one, get that extra storage. And that ends up being a really, really sweet, nice setup for the Gladiator. So we're gonna do a quick walkthrough of kind of everything that's going on on the back of this camper. Um, over here, typically we'll use an Expedition Essentials propane tank mount. Um, I personally prefer this power tank mount. It's just a little lower profile, uh, a little lighter weight. Um, and so this customer also liked that and he went with the power tank mount as well. Um, over here, we've got that gravity fed water from the water tank that's up front. We'll show you that. Uh, this is a quick connect for propane for the fireplace. So once the propane tank is here, you know, you'll connect it up here, run the quick connect, plug that in. Um, over here, we ended up doing a jerry can holder. Um, this is an Outgear, Outgear Solutions jerry can holder from one of his bumpers. Um, we just, we like working with Joe, so we ended up using one of those. Um, and then he's got his extra diesel fuel over here. Um, over here on this side, we've got a set of Max Tracks, um, and we've got some GP Factor latches. You guys saw in one of the other videos, I kind of covered that. Um, just really, really nice, easy way to secure Max Tracks. Um, I po pointed out in the last video, but I didn't show actually how they work. Um, so this, these are Acme threaded bolts. They're all stainless, they're never gonna corrode. Um, and essentially you've got the Acme threaded bolt in here and uh, all you have to do to secure it is put this guy back on and just start spinning it. And so if you're someone who's owned Max Tracks before, you'll know that if you do the Max Tracks pins up here, uh, they can tend to warp. And so GP Factor is a company that we work very closely with and everything they make is the highest quality. Uh, they don't skimp out really anywhere. And uh, these are something that's probably often overlooked because of the price. But if you're someone who just likes having really nice functional stuff that's gonna last forever, the GP latches are that. Um, over here, we've got a Baja Designs angled flush mount light. So that's a light that not many people know about. Uh, they were actually built for Baja, or Baja built them for a commercial project um, for the side of like construction vehicles. Um, it mounts at an angle. It has an O-ring built into it. And so you're never gonna have any water intrusion inside the camper. And it's also a really good chase light because it's angled slightly down. 
Um, up here, we've got an 813 Fabrications camera relocation. Um, on this particular vehicle, uh, we've got the factory camera. Uh, this has the option to do a aftermarket camera as well. So you can run both in conjunction on mirror setup and a dash setup. Uh, this one has a little secret sauce to it, which is pretty cool. Um, there's a taser module that you can plug into the ECU and actually program the Jeep to do a couple different fun things. And so this particular vehicle, when you turn a turn signal on, the camera will display on the factory radio. So initially when we built this out, we had a really nice aftermarket Alpine radio, but after the customer drove the vehicle for a bit, he decided he wanted to try the factory radio again with the factory camera and that taser module and uh, just driving the vehicle over here to take some shots. Uh, it's actually really freaking cool. And it accomplishes what we want when we add a backup camera, which is the ability to not only use it as a backup camera, but use it as a rear view camera. So, you know, the camper's in the way, you can't check your rear view mirror anymore. If you're changing lanes, you're fully dependent on side mirrors. Whereas with this one, we've got the camera. And when you flip that turn signal on, you'll get the view behind you. So just great safety option. Um, moving on over here, uh, you obviously you'll see the chimney. This is the GP factor Dickinson fireplace um, kit, we'll call it, and uh, stainless fireplace, dual chamber. You'll get the cool look of the, the fireplace inside. Um, it does really work. It works really, really well, and it works really well in conjunction with the way we seal the campers. So you're not getting any like moist, not moisture, but um, cold like air coming in. Um, we seal the crap out of this thing, and it holds all that heat. I've personally camped at what was it 13 degrees in Flagstaff? And I was upstairs and boxers and um, I actually don't bring a sleeping bag anymore. I just bring a comforter. So it works really, really well. It's dry heat, it's extremely safe. I've never had any sort of uh, alarm go off on my carbon monoxide detector um, and it keeps it warm. Uh, it's also really efficient. Uh, here we've also got a Julka quick release mount. Um, I see a lot of folks mounting a Julka heater, uh, water heater to the water tank. The negative of that is that it actually has exhaust. So if you're mounting it inside your camper and you're taking a shower, you're kind of just blowing fumes around inside of where you're gonna sleep. So I recommended to the customer that we mount this on the outside. It's the quick release. So when it's time for him to go do his trip, he'll pop this guy on there. Um, and when he's not driving it on a trip, he can take it off and it doesn't have to be on the truck all the time. Um, that's about it for the back door, other than just kind of the mechanism. One question we get asked a lot is, can someone lock you in? Um, and the answer is like, if you're at camp and you close yourself in, someone can't come by and put a lock on the door and lock you in. Um, you know, if you're playing a prank on a buddy and he's hanging out inside, yeah, you can lock him in. But as long as the door is locked from the inside first, this little latch is gonna be outside this bar and it's gonna sit like that. So even if I put a padlock right here, which you can't actually do, the door is still gonna open on the inside. So moving on to the back door, um, this is kind of the, the typical formula that we go with when doing a canopy camper build out. Uh, you obviously you lose your tailgate, but having a table right here, which this is the GP Factor full-size drop-down table, uh, it's got the cutting board integrated into it. Uh, you end up with a bunch of cooking area um, and you can kind of keep this cleaner than the tailgate, right? So this is really, really strong. It's food grade stainless steel. So if you wanted, you could cut directly on this. Um, it's built incredibly well. Uh, there's a little YouTube clip or I'm sorry, Instagram clip of me slamming the crap out of the one that's on my truck. Uh, I don't know if we can throw that in there for them, they can see, but I don't treat it nicely. It's stronger than hell. Um, molly plate wise, like you could honestly just start with just molly plates. You could do four molly plates. You could do just the table, um, but two molly plates is kind of that go-to that we do. Um, on mine, I've got a cooking kit attached over here, first aid kit, fire extinguisher. But the nice thing about Molly is that you can kind of make it your own. Um, and then in addition to those from the factory, you get that handle right here, which most people miss. Um, this one, we actually extended the handle just slightly to clear some hardware for some of the modifications we did on the back. Um, you get your National Luna touch light. Uh, these are dimmable. You can go low, medium, high, and they're also interchangeable and you can go red or white. Most of the time my truck stays on red to keep the bugs out and maintain night vision. Uh, this is the latch that I pointed out to you guys a moment ago. That's how you'll, you'll close yourself in the camper at night. Um, you wanna make sure that you do that and you wanna make sure it's latched tightly. That's one of the most common questions I get is my door doesn't seem to be closing all the way and it's because it does take a little bit of force to get it to seal really well. Um, that's gonna keep rain from coming in um, and that's gonna keep cold air from coming in. In addition to that, we've got a little alley cap limit strap up here. That's gonna keep the gas strut from getting blown out. 
the gas struts here to assist you opening the door, but also to keep your door propped open if it's windy. Um, so even with like a tire on there, um, you know, the wind can kind of swing that closed on you, but the gas strut's really gonna help either keep it fully open or slow it down a lot if the wind decides to, uh, you know, pick up and, and push that door closed. Um, we've also got the Alucab uh, screens up here. So you have a layer of screen material and you have a layer of the same burly canvas that's used on the tent. And I would say if you're only kind of budgeting allows for one screen, this is the screen to get keep your wind doors closed at, uh, at camp. But as soon as I get to camp, my door comes open, I pull these two tabs and uh, the fabric drops down. So you've got zippers on both sides and that'll keep the bug screens in there. Uh, usually with like the pup, we'll let the pup go to bed a little earlier. We leave the, the screens down and if she wakes up and she's not happy, we can at least hear her rather than kind of closing her in the, the big scary camper by yourself. So we've shown you a lot of the stuff on the outside. Uh, there's still a couple things that we'll cover, but right now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop the tent for you guys so you guys can see live how easy it is. Um, I usually have an aluminum storage box back here and uh, I'll use the storage box to step and then step onto the bumper, uh, but you do have that handle here. So I'm gonna go foot up here, handle here, step up, and then it's just two safety pins, latch, latch and uh, push up. Now, as far as the tent material goes, we'll, uh, we'll just quickly talk about it. So Alucab tent material, it's one of the things I always tell people when I see them at Overland Expo, is substantially just better built than what you're gonna find on an inexpensive tent, or even a lot of the other ones that are really higher, considered higher quality. Um, it's one of the places where I think Alucab really differentiates itself. So I always say, walk around the show and just feel the tent material. Look at the tension on the tent itself. If you see a lot of loose fabric, it's gonna make a bunch of noise in the wind. Um, this is pulled super, super taut. If I tap on the side of the camper or on the tent material, it's like pulled really tight, kind of like a snare drum. Um, and so in the wind, even when you're not facing the right direction, uh, it's gonna be really solid. Um, we'll walk you inside now and we'll show you some goose gear and some electrical stuff. All right guys, so inside the camper, I popped the top tent, but the sleeping platform is kind of where the Alucab really differ differentiates itself from all the other camper systems. Um, you're either gonna have a tile system where you move these little tiles over, or you're gonna have large tiles where you kind of stack them on top of each other. The Alucab is red. So gas strut, two separate pieces. I push up right there. The small portion of the bed comes up. This allows someone to get in and out of the camper while someone else is sleeping upstairs. But also, I've got all my bedding up here, sleeping bags. I stand up and I just push it up. And then it holds itself in place because it's got gas struts. So, you know, a lot of people make the transition from moving from like a rooftop tent because they're tired of the cleanup. George behind the camera hates rooftop tents, I think more than any other person I know at this point. Um, and I know you just did that video and you guys can check that out on this channel. Um, and it's, it's a lot of work. So when you graduate to, and forgive the terminology, but move your way up towards a camper, um, you know, your expectations go up. You want things to be easier, things to be more comfortable. And the big difference on the Audi cab versus the other ones is kind of that sleeping arrangement. Um, you're not disturbing the other person sleeping. You're able to leave all of your sleeping stuff in the sleeping area not worrying about having enough room. Um, and it just makes things super simple. So um, we'll jump into some of the other options we've got in here. Let's start with Goose Gear. This arrangement is what I started with in my truck. Um, this is version 2.0 of the Alucab interior. Uh, when I got my truck, I was actually able to leave it with Brian at Goose Gear um, and they were able to spend time with the Alucab system uh, for a significant amount of time. Previously, everything was kind of done um, via email and phone call with Rin over at OK Four Wheel Drive. Um, and what they built was actually really rad. I think this just kicked it up a notch because they had their hands on the truck. Um, so, you know, as far as like ideal configurations, uh, I like the single drawer on this side. Um, if you are looking to conserve weight, maybe save a couple bucks, uh, you can opt out of a drawer and you can go with a rear utility cabinet. So this is called the rear drawer. This is a front utility cabinet and you can mirror and kind of piece together these on either side. You can't put a drawer up here because the wheel well, 
Um, but that's one of the reasons why the utility cabinet is so functional. It covers up that awkward wheel well space and allows you to stuff a bunch of stuff in there. So like I've got some boots for recovery in there. I've got a little end table at camp, um, some stakes and whatnot for, uh, you know, staking things down, not to eat. Um, but having the modularity of being able to configure this as you go uh, is pretty awesome. This is a sleep deck. Uh, I've never personally slept on it. You could, in a five foot bed, it's gonna be tight uh, for a full grown adult, adult, but for kids, you've got five feet of length going this way as well. So if you're, let's say a family of three, you can have uh, you know, mom and the baby sleep up front or an adult down here, or the, uh, the kiddo down here, mom and dad up top. Um, you know, we, when we camp, we've got the pup down here um, for, maybe she did that once and then she cried and we brought her up in bed with us. But I think the big thing here is that Goose Gear's made extremely well. Um, all of their latches, the locking mechanisms, the drawer hinges are all elevated from, I would say, competition that's out there. Um, you know, they've now moved to their own aluminum extrusion profile that's lighter and stronger. Um, and just from a functionality standpoint, like it really kind of turns this thing into a home on wheels. Um, it also gives us places to mount stuff. So when we do a battery, we actually tie it into the use gear base plate. So when you give us a call, you ask us to build you out an electrical system, regardless of you wanting the entire complete goose gear package, we're gonna recommend that base plate so that we can use it as a foundation for anything else that we add onto it. Um, what we'll do next is we'll jump into some electrical. So below the sleep platform, which ends up being kind of the best seat in the house, um, we've got a bulkhead panel. This bulkhead panel is really nice to be able to conceal gear that you've got um, and want to keep your bed clean. On my particular truck, I've got a floor jack mounted down there. And in this truck, we've actually got, and it's going to be tight to see because we have it pushed so far. Um, we've got a 2000 watt red R converter. Uh, the customer is going to run a panini press out of it. He says he's got to have paninis at camp, um, which I can get on board with. And we've also got 200 amp hours of lithium batteries back there. That is charged by a Red Arc BCDC 1250. The 12 is for 12 volts, 50 is 50 amps of charge rate. Um, and then we monitor that with a Victron BMV 712 smart monitor. It's got a small little round screen that we'll get a shot of, uh, but it's also got a Bluetooth app. So you can kind of see how things are going, um, you know, after your trip, or if you're worried about running that inverter and making, you know, 50 paninis for everyone at the campsite, uh, you can log into the app and you can see uh, how much time you have left based on current usage with solar coming in or the alternator charging or none of that um, until you deplete your batteries fully. The beauty of lithium is that you can fully deplete them without damaging them and recharge them. So most trucks, we just do 100 amp hours. If you elect for an inverter um, with, we'll call it anything over a thousand watts, we're gonna spec you with 200 amp hours of battery. And that's based on Red Arc recommendations, but also just kind of knowing that you're gonna burn through power through an inverter much quicker than you would on DC. So a little lesson on AC-DC, if you can find whatever device you're bringing, whether it's a CPAP machine, um, a panini maker, a blender, if you can find those same devices in DC, elect to go with DC because it's far more efficient. You lose a lot of power in the conversion from DC to AC. All right guys, so Goose Gear Electrical Board, uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of different packages offered. Uh, on the Alucab build sheet. Uh, GP Factor makes some really beautiful boards. Um, we've stuck with this system because it's what I originally put in my truck and I just love it. Um, so we've got a Blue C4321 switch panel. Uh, essentially you've got four switches that are circuit breaker protected. Uh, we like to put the two USB ports and 12 volt sockets on the bottom switch. Um, then we've got an accessory switch which is gonna turn all the USB ports and 12 volt sockets and lights up in the sleeping area on. And then you've got a cabin lights button. So the beauty of that is, you know, if I open my side door, I hit one button, all the lights have memory and they'll all turn on if that's the last position you left them in. When it's time to go to bed, rather than having to go boop, 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 um, you can just hit one switch, which is really nice. Um, this is that Victron battery monitor I mentioned to you guys. That's gonna give you a voltage reading as well as um, that time to depletion essentially. Um, up here, we've got a circuit breaker that we use for the solar. And uh, that's just extra protection. Honestly, it's extremely overkill, but it is nice for troubleshooting purposes to make sure solar is working. Um, let's say you go and you hit a branch and you're kind of unsure of you know, how much solar draw you have rather than having a complicated system um, or additional components to really see what solar is bringing in. Um, honestly, these systems are designed with so much function that 
you really don't know need to know how much solar is pulling in is because your battery is staying mostly topped off um, especially with that bcdc 1250 um, that's charging those batteries really quickly so super simple panel um, everything behind it we'll see if we've got any uh, b-roll to show you guys um, we label everything sleeve everything and so if you ever want to expand upon it in the future or if you are in new jersey and you're on an overland trip you could go to ok four wheel drive and say hey guys i want to add a fan it's too hot out here um, they'll be able to pop that panel off see exactly what every single thing is um, and service it easily so we take a ton of pride in the electrical work we do um, and the labels was something that was really big for us uh, just so that it's more serviceable we talked about that in the engine bay um, but everywhere we do it regardless of you being able to see it um, it's there, the quality's there. All right, so this video is starting to run a really long time. Uh, we're gonna cover a couple more things. And then if you guys wanna see more stuff like this, if you want me to dive deeper into all the different audio cap setups, leave a comment. Um, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. But essentially here, we've got a 13 gallon water tank. Um, there is baffles built into it, so you're not gonna feel the water slosh around as much when you're driving. Um, you've also got the Alucab water tank canvas bag kit. Uh, initially, when I ordered my camper, I didn't have the canvas bag kit. I thought it was a little hokey, um, but one of them came to us for a build out for Overland Expo, and I got to see the quality in person. And there's actually an aluminum backing behind all this, so these stay really rigid. I end up putting like air down tools in there, air up stuff in there, um, cosmetics for my wife, dog stuff, uh, my toiletries and uh, it ends up providing really good function and the bags hold up really nice all right guys so that wraps it up for this truck i know we didn't cover a few of the things on there uh the shower cube the awning but we can definitely do those for you guys in another video um, if you guys do want to see more content anything specific i read every single comment i'll reply um, but we'll also get a video going for you guys if you need we can do some shorts we can also do instagram um, but you can also just call the shop george is behind the camera he'll likely be working with you on a canopy camper um, you also might be chatting with noah or jeff um, on behalf of the tiny rig team thank you guys uh, thanks for watching thanks for subscribing thanks for leaving a comment it does help us out a lot we found some customers through youtube um, and it's you know it's here for you guys this is how i learned a lot of the stuff and uh, we're going to try to keep that content going for you guys. So take care and uh, we'll see you guys next time.